In a video a few months back, I touched on how a watch like this Orient presented much better value than a fashion watch. And that gave me an idea. How about I properly explain why that's the case? Or at least why to me that's the case. What makes this good watch good for the price and some of the alternatives not so much? I figured we'd turn this into a review and a buying guide at the same time to answer that very question. Of course, the definition of what constitutes a good watch is subjective, but I do think there is a few things you can look out for. By the way, this video is going to cover the more attainable end of the market, not the luxury high-end stuff. Other channels do a much better job of that than me. Let's begin with price. Price is, of course, the most important factor in all of this. This Orient typically retails for just below £200 for reference. It's linked in the description if you want to check it out, thanks to Amazon for covering the cost of it too. Honestly, I think a basic watch can be considered good if it's priced appropriately. Of course, some watches are so poorly constructed that they're effectively a complete waste of materials, regardless of price. I wouldn't recommend dropping a fiver on a watch, for instance, unless it's a miracle deal. However, for most watches, we have to judge the product first to see if the price is good. So let's crack on with that. When considering the product, it's important to keep one thought in your mind. How much time, effort and money has gone into creating and producing it? Store that message in your brain right now. The reason I say this is because this factor varies wildly in the watch space. More so than in most other industries I can think of. If you've watched my channel for any duration, you will have seen the evidence of that. Here's one of the first things I look for in a product. Original design. Original design is something I've grown to appreciate far more over the years. There's a plethora of brands out there whose repertoire solely consists of homage watches or homage watches, which essentially rip off famous designs to differing degrees. While these can provide the overall look of a popular watch for less money, I struggle to find true enjoyment from them because it's just not their design. In most cases, the brand is just copy and pasted from a more successful company with minor changes, which in my eyes is just not that difficult to accomplish. I admire when a company goes to the effort of designing something which has its own identity, almost as if the watch is considered a piece of art rather than a lazy attempt to just grab your wallet. One trick to be aware of is when brands pump out incredibly lackluster and ill-conceived watches under the mask of minimalism. While minimalist watches are less busy than other watch dials, it doesn't mean you should be persuaded into buying a watch that looks like it's been mapped out in about nine seconds. Looking at the Orient in front of me, it's got a design that I can't say reminds me of any other. It's certainly not a copy and paste job either and looks like its design has been considered for some time. I think it's great looking too, which is also worth highlighting. We're in the age now where technological advances have virtually rendered wristwatches redundant. Try saying that one six times. Therefore, I think the aesthetics are more crucial than ever, with the standard wristwatch taking its place as more of a fashion accessory than an inherently functional item. I'm not going to tell you what you like the look of. That's up to you. However, I will say it's worth scouting around a bit to see if there's anything that looks just as good but hits more of the rest of the criteria in this video. In my opinion, this Orient looks better than the Filippo Loretti, even though they do look quite different, but it's especially evident on a macro level, which I'll mention in a moment. The latter is too flashy for me, but it's far from the worst looking watch I've come across, I've got to be honest. A crucial factor linked with this is the level of construction and the materials used. If a watch is made of poor materials, it's inevitably going to end up looking shabby very quickly. 316L stainless steel is the industry standard material for wristwatches above about the £40 mark in the UK. Both watches in front of me are constructed of this material, so the cases will generally perform the same when it comes to scratches and corrosion. Lesser materials include the likes of zinc alloy and resin, along with other types of stainless steel such as 304L, which has worse corrosion properties than 316L. Unless you're buying a super budget Casio, I'd steer clear of these other materials where you can help it. We've also discussed the likes of titanium watches before on the channel, so check those videos for more information on that alternative metal. You'll notice that bracelets and straps are constructed to different levels too. Many budget options come with rudimentary folded links, which are cheap and easy to manufacture. Others, including this Orient, house solid links, which are more expensive to produce and more comfortable on wrist as they're less likely to pull hairs. One thing this Orient bracelet is missing is solid end links. You'll see they're hollow here, and the clasp is also rather basic too. But overall, it's fine for the money. 
The Filippo Loretti strap was the best part of that package, but I've seen some awful ones on the likes of Daniel Wellington and Movement, which would likely have become unusable after a couple of months of wear. Not only did they end up looking grimy, but they could also fall apart. When it comes to crystals, or glass over the dial, you'll see some major differences in performance. This Orient features a sapphire crystal, which is typically considered the best material due to its incredible scratch resistance. Many low-end watches utilize a more affordable mineral crystal, which does offer better shatter resistance, but scratches much more easily. Of course, all that quality construction could go to waste should the watch be crippled by aquatic leakage. Indeed, better sealed watches are a straight up advantage in many situations, and higher designations certainly give you more peace of mind. Obviously, you'd like more water resistance in watches aimed at sports applications, which is the antithesis of this Orient with its dressier design. It does have a five bar rating, meaning it is submergible, but I wouldn't recommend swimming in it. When you think about it though, it's not all that difficult to throw together a steel watch and whack some glass over the top. So what else do we need to look out for? Well, one of the telltale signs of a quality watch is precise finishing. This is one of the key areas where many fashion watches fall short. You'll notice they'll stack the specs to make the watch look great on paper, yet when the watch arrives, it just looks rubbish. The case finishing is perhaps the most obvious example of this. This Orient features a variety of polished and brushed surfaces with a chamfered edge down each flank to add some interest. It requires multiple machining processes to create a variety of shapes and finishes like this, so it is fairly time consuming. But in most cases, the visual improvements are worth the effort. The sharper the brushing and the transitions between different types of finishing, generally the more time has gone into it. You'll notice that many low quality watches use generic and simplistic case shapes with only a single type of brushing or polishing throughout its entirety. This is done because it's quicker and consequently cheaper. Finishing extends to other areas too, including the dial. The easiest things to look out for are the markers and hands. This open heart orient features some classy indexes that have a crevice in the center along with a neat array of microscopic ridges on either side when you look closely. The Filippo Loretti, in contrast, has what appears to be bland gold pieces of plastic stuck onto the chapter ring. This is a theme that we've seen with other brands like Movement and DW as well. On the hand front, this Orient is perfectly presentable, adorning a half brushed and half polished look with a slice of luminescence down the middle. As many of you pointed out, although the Filippo Loretti handset looks alright on the surface, when you look closer, the cut corners start to reveal themselves, literally. Deciding to forego the second hand with this model, Filippo was satisfied with simply snapping it off, leaving a rotating, ticking disc in its place, with nothing attached, exposing the rough edges. I only noticed this after recording the review of that watch, so I had to bring it up at some point, given how many of you noticed it and commented. I can't say I've seen that approach before, and boy does it look sloppy when you notice it. The only thing I find more frustrating than this is when you have a second hand that's going all over the place which takes us to quality control. You'll generally notice more frequent QC issues on more poorly constructed watches, which typically include misalignment of hands, markers, and text. In some cases, there will even be dirt under the crystal, which is very difficult to remove if you're not experienced with watches. This showcases a lack of care or attention to detail, which should be improving the more money you pay. The only thing I've noticed with this Orient is that the six o'clock marker is fractionally tilted to the left. Other than that, it's been done to a surprisingly high standard, even for Orient, with a gorgeous set of high shine rings outlining not only the chapter ring, but also the subdial and open heart configurations. Many worse value options have bland, boring dials that lack depth and detail, despite often looking nice in stock images. And they're almost using that minimalist marketing as a bit of an excuse. Upon flipping this watch over, you'll see the workings of a mechanical movement. Now this video won't go into full depth on the merits of mechanical versus battery powered movements. However, one thing to consider is that an automatic movement like this F9622 will be more expensive to produce due to the large number of moving parts. Quartz watches are essentially an electrical circuit powered by a battery, meaning they can be pumped out much more efficiently. It's a little surprise then that many fashion watches go down the latter route whilst still maintaining the same price point to maximize profits. If you're after a quartz watch, Orient does have many quartz offerings for much fairer prices. If you're not familiar with these movements, one of the simplest things you can do is check the value of the movement by doing a quick Google search. And you can assume when bought in bulk, they'll be even cheaper. Not only is purchase price important, but there's also another price that you may have forgotten about. 
that being resale value. While most affordable watches aren't going to hold their value or increase in value as with some luxury watches, some of the more respected brands like this Orient allow you to get a large chunk of your money back if you decide to part with it at some point. At least from my experience in the UK when reselling well-known brands, especially those that are well respected, you can typically recuperate between about 40 to in some cases about 90% of the cost on eBay, depending on the condition of the watch of course. As I've showcased on this channel before, you're lucky if you can scrape back 20% of the cost of most fashion watches, even if you've only worn them once. This is because fewer people know of or care about the obscure brand in question, so they're less likely to buy. That's if the watch survives long enough to be resold, which is doubtful with some of the worst offenders that I've seen. When you think about it, this resale value is almost like an effective reduction to the list price, which makes watches like this Orient look even better value in comparison. Is this Orient the peak of watchmaking? Of course it isn't. What you'll find is that each of the factors mentioned in this video should be improving as the price tag increases. Should being the key word, as it isn't always the case. But whatever your budget, look out for each of those factors and compare a few options if you can to give you an idea of what you're getting for your hard-earned cash. The watch I featured today is linked in the description, and with the specs that you can see on screen, it's a little too large for my wrist, but it looks extremely elegant for a budget watch, and that's from someone who doesn't really like skeletonized pieces at all. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one.